Hi, I'm Catherine D. Harris, and this is the navigation for my course, Introduction to Literary Criticism, English 101 at San Jose State University. I'm currently teaching this course, so the student view that you've got of Canvas on your screen is what students have worked through so far. So not everything is going to be on here when students first engage with this. This is the student view, so all that they see are home, modules, announcements, discussions, people, syllabus, your research resources, grades, and Zoom. Everything else has been stripped off of here so that they know that they're being directed through the modules. Of course, over here, all of the to-do wouldn't be here if they were just logging in, and there wouldn't be any announcement except for the It's Alive announcement. That's the only one up there. Students start with getting started with this graphic. And they are obligated to go through this one first before they are allowed to do anything else. And they have to complete all items in the order that they are in this module. So we're set up as modules. And you can see here, I've taken us through and had published through week four module, week five. This is a 10 week summer course. In the fall, we have 16 weeks, so we'll go through 16 weeks of modules. Each module is named according to the critical model that we're dealing with that particular week. So students get access to and will have getting started unlocked before the class even begins. I'll send them an email and ask them to work through everything. Welcome to the course starts us off. There's a welcome video from me. It's very brief. It just tells them who I am and it's posted on YouTube, but it's embedded here so they never have to leave Canvas. That's very important to me that they don't have to click more than twice to get to something. Most of the time they only have to click once. We have the course description, the course learning outcomes, which are required of all departments uh, in the English, all syllabi in the English department. It's a four unit course, so we are obligated to tell them what is that extra unit worth uh, in terms of the work that they're doing, so that's described. The course workload is very important. It's also required because even before we went online, students needed to know how much they were required to do so they could slot in how many classes they could take along with the other things that are required in their lives because most of our students work. The required text, this is all in the first page of this module. So all the important stuff and also how to order them immediately. And then at the bottom I have how to navigate this course because majority of my students have never taken an online course and are working through some time management issues before they even begin the semester. So the next page is also information for students taking an online course and I ask them to read through this in terms of their study habits and then start to formulate a plan about how how will you manage your time. This is also where all those links are that we just discussed in terms of um, 7.2 and 8.1 navigation in terms of where are these important things to help your students when they do have technical issues. Here's also the learning resource centers that are available time management skills, also the technology and tools that are required because again our students don't take online classes all that often at San Jose State University. We also have how to be uh, how for further reading and I like Canvas modules because they do have this guided view through the modules themselves and I can either restrict them to go one after the other or I can leave it free open. What I'm discovering is that students just click through immediately without reading anything. So this means that I'll have to figure out a way, um, a syllabus quiz at the end of the getting started to ensure that they've not only read but thoroughly absorbed the things that are on here. Alright, so that's the first module. So you can see everything here that is just required information. Now the thing that I discuss with an instructional designer is that I don't have all of these things over here in the left hand. If they wanted to know these basic things, if we just went back over to the getting started module, I keep telling them go to getting started first to find something that you have um, information about. I do use universal design in terms of what how I name things and I try to make it very clear. Uh, things like instructors online office is a discussion board area. It's right under instructor information. Live session information and schedule has the Zoom link. And if we go back up here, 
I don't, we've had some issues with them clicking onto Zoom and going right into it. So what eCampus and IT has told us was to give them a direct link in some way. So if we went back over to the home, what we'll see at the base here are the important things. Course syllabus, instructor information, getting started, and then the live Zoom link. And I have some HTML skills, but I've not been able to figure out how to get this back up here in this column. I'll have to deal with that with eCampus in a little in a little ways. So then if students are coming into something like say week one or let's do another one. That's one where we really get started with the content of the course. So week two new criticism. It's consistent. So every part of the module is consistent and exactly the same every week. So they all have an overview, they all have a readings and videos, they all have a quiz on video lectures, it's all the same structure throughout. And then sometimes if there's something I want them to read in between, like reading strategically for literary criticism, I'll add this in here as a step in the module. So each assignment they can also see through the icons what they are. This is the icon for a quiz, this is the icon for a page, which means they don't have any activities. This is the icon for a discussion board, so they can click through all of those. And I like that Canvas has all of these dates and the points that are allotted to them so that they know what they're doing with them. I've also started instituting per the student's request. When I do, I did use the whiteboard a lot when we were in person because this is a discussion-based class that students really contribute to, so I keep track of notes on the whiteboard. And we had giant whiteboards all around this particular classroom we were always in for the last 15 years. So I've tried to start using whiteboard on Zoom and putting notes in there, and I've been saving those and then inserting them as an actual module step underneath our Thursday live session. And then we also have every Thursday after our live session, a live session feedback, and it consists of the same exact four questions. Consistency is key so that we get to an ebb and flow. Same thing with the activities after our live session. They have an application of a theory that's due, and then after that, they look at each other's work and assess it, and then they're graded on that assessment as well. So every week we do that exact same thing. We're up to week five next week. This has not been published yet. It's still locked. So you can see everything is exactly the same. So again, this is only a 10-week session in the summer. This will be much longer in the semester because it's 16 weeks. And the one thing I do like, once you collapse all of the modules, if you just want an overview here, then students can scroll down to see what they have completed. They've completed one item, completed all items, all items. And as we've gone through, I haven't made it that they've got to click through every item in order because some students start doing some things out of order, which is fine. However, I do do things like this. Uh, when we have our readings, I ask them, these are the readings that we've got. I give them all the readings and I linked to that, linked to them. And then we have in the order of importance the videos that I would like them to watch. Okay. And then the next thing right after the readings, you can click on next. And it's the video, it's the quiz itself. So of course I can't get into it because I'm in student view itself. All right. One of the other things that I do if I go to the start of this module, and by the way, the videos that I post lectures, uh, the, the lectures that I do, I post to YouTube so that I can embed them here. And it's on an unlisted um, playlist that all of the videos are there. So they can watch ahead if they like, um, but I tell them that that's really difficult to do. So this is what they get every week. Uh, it's an overview. It starts off with what are we doing with links to everything that you're doing. And it gives them an activity, watch, read, complete, 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 right? So everything is there. And then also this is the goals. And I am, um, I did change some of these based on the Bloom's taxonomy and the language to use. 
and I do this with every module so they see exactly what they're able to do. These goals don't change though except for the critical model title. They're the same. I want to reiterate the same thing. We're doing the same thing every week. All we're doing is switching out how they're actually analyzing literature through what critical lens. So there's a lot of sameness and uniformity to here. I also do use all of the header titles because we're keenly aware that a lot of our students will sometimes have their computers read a screen to them. I use alt tags for any images that I use in here. For instance, when we have at the home page, all of these images have an alt tag to them so that they can be read through a screen reader. And I do ask students to, when they post to the discussion boards, to not attach a document but instead post directly in there as text. Number one, when it's an assignment, it can go through Turnitin so I can detect plagiarism. Number two, so nobody has to download anything in order to read each other's work. I want everything to be on the screen in front of them. I do have some students who work through their mobile devices, not that many. Uh, most all of them have a laptop access at home even though we're not on campus right now. So I do a survey at the beginning of every semester to see what students have access to and if they only have access to a mobile phone then I send them directly to the library where they can check out a laptop for the entire semester or just for a couple of days. I also reiterate to them where the computer labs are on campus and ask them to work through there instead of their mobile phones. Some of it has to do with the time of day that they're doing their work. If they're doing it in between shifts uh, of working, then that's all they've got for right then. Then I encourage them to check out a tablet or a laptop. Uh, if they are working long hours, we talk about their time management, and I get into that with, in getting started. One thing that I will change, uh, the getting started icon ha is very small in terms of the text itself, and that was because of the way that I had to structure it so that those were all the way across. This is not set up in tables. Um, no, actually it is. This is set up in tables so it's machine readable so somebody would be able to scan it with a machine reader and see. It would say alt text getting started and then it would read across from left to right week one, week two, week three. Uh, and uh, we make those accommodations based on the best practices coming from our accessibility office. Not everybody has HTML. Uh, I just happen to do it, so that means that it takes me longer to do things and to do them well to make sure all of our students are seeing everything. You'll notice on the other side over here, students have to do, and they should be getting used to the icons of the of this is a this is an announcement and what everything else means over here. I have asked them, they when we've gone through on that same day, when they click on account to set up notifications so that they get a push notification on the from the mobile app or an email when something is posted. So we do spend a little bit of time on the first day. How do you get Canvas to work for you? We do also have, I allow them to take a look at the course calendar and I include that and then I also showed them how to use the RSS feed to plug into their own maybe Google Calendar and then they can create their own alerts for getting assignment notifications of this is due in two days so get on it. So here you can also see what's due and when it is due. Not many students use this from the ones that I've spoken to but again a lot of a majority of my students that I'm going to be teaching are not used to online so I send them to these kinds of things uh, so that they can be prepared at the beginning of the semester Bef because let's face it in the fall they're going to be taking four and going to be try to take five classes of online classes and when they've never taken online classes and we have a variety of ways that we do things all right let's go back over here i think that concludes uh, everything in the way that the class is put together in terms of navigation again i just started using the modules this summer with this class and started putting it all together and i've learned a great deal from everybody else so thank you